Yeah, Zach, Marissa, it's very picturesque this morning. A gorgeous backdrop with the mountains here in uh, the White Mountains region of New Hampshire. I can tell you a little bit about what we're seeing so far as much snow, um, right around five inches exactly. And we know that this came down initially really heavy and wet. So that's going to cut into totals a little bit. We also started off with rain last night. It took a while for that snow to transition uh, because of the fact that we were hovering right above freezing. But let's take a look at the roads. You can see that they have been plowed, uh, but we still have some piles of snow on either side. Not too many people out this morning because we do have hundreds of school closures across the state of New Hampshire. Kids here in Plymouth, they have a snow day too. Um, and you could see why the timing of this, we still have a lot of snow still coming down right around that morning rush hour commute time. So definitely seems like the right call uh, for a lot of parents who honestly didn't have too many snow days so far this year in the New England region. We know that because of this storm, it's led to a lot of outages. Most people without power across the country right now are in New Hampshire and Maine. Maine, almost 200,000 customers without power. Here in New Hampshire, we've got over 100,000 customers without power. We know this was a really wind-driven snow. I think you could tell sometimes when you see some of these cars driving by. When I was clearing off my car this morning, I noticed that one side of my car was really tough getting that snow off. It really caked on, kind of a slushy, icy consistency first layer, then you get to the outer layer of the lighter snow, but then on the other side of my car, it just brushed right off. So that showed me that that snow really came down on an angle for most of the night. A lot of folks probably are going to be waking up dealing with the same thing, clearing their cars off, trying to hit the road, but they are at least waking up to a beautiful morning. And this has been kind of good news to a lot of people in New England because this week is typically the projected closing date for a lot of New England ski resorts. But people are hoping this fresh snowpack maybe extends the season a little bit. What do you guys think? I couldn't agree. I, I was, I've been talking about it a lot, but I just was in Stowe. And they were really excited about the March snow that we had already talking, Katie, about this event. I mean, I'm also just curious about your perspective. You've covered a lot of snow events so far. But now we're in April. Zach and I feel like we should be closing the book in some way. But you've been out in it. <laughs> are, are you done? Are, are you mentally just trying to put yourself somewhere else? <laughs> I was close to putting my snow gear away, but I've learned my lesson working for Fox Weather. You just <laughs> never know. Mm -hmm. I will say I looked back at the, the last couple years working here. I haven't covered an April snowstorm, wow. so it's not that common, I don't think. Yeah, well, we're going to be checking the box off, I guess, yeah. in 2024 for you. We'll see what 2025 <laughs> April will bring. Katie Byrne over in Plymouth, New Hampshire. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. That was beautiful. You're right. That's a beautiful part of the country. Lovely. A sleepy New England town snowed in. Let's show you some more of that. Um, out of Bar Harbor, Maine, you head to Down East Maine. They are just getting walloped with snow as well. Um, you have portions of upstate New York that are going to be in it through the remainder of the day. And uh, into Westminster, Massachusetts. Did I say that right? You did. Okay. I, sometimes I, I just want to make sure. Those Massachusetts town are tough. Yeah, I just want to make sure I'm just, you know, one Nailed of you. Um, but the camera is really painting the picture for us of the story that is out there for the Northeast, for New England in particular. Look at some of these totals. This is of the snow still to come. So this is in addition to what you've already seen, where some of those totals, and we'll show you, are over half a foot, especially when you take it into the green and the white mountains. That's where we could still see another couple of feet. Even upstate New York, um, that's where we could also get another foot of snow or so. And some of these totals that we've been talking about, Zach, you take it into Maine right there, almost a foot at 10 inches. Even New York pulling yeah. out some of the stops. That's the thing is it is going to be a little more widespread than maybe initially indicated. This is going all the way from central and upstate New York all the way to the crown of Maine. It's going to be sort of reminiscent of what we saw from the past few days over into the upper Midwest. Over 12 inches of snow from Michigan into pockets of mm -hmm. Wisconsin as well. And this right now over in Vermont and obviously more of that wintry scene. But there is going to be that sharp cutoff. Northern New England cashing in on the snow. Southern New England, an absolute mess. Just waterlogged and drenched. And that rain is saturating the ground. You combine that with the winds of 40, 50, nearly 60 miles per hour. And outages, they may continue to go up.
I mean, look at Maine. Since we've been on air with everybody at 5 o'clock Eastern time, we're now flirting with 200,000 customers. And then, wow. as Katie mentioned, in New Hampshire, 114,000 customers. So part of the reason is the deteriorating conditions. Also, people waking up and trying to turn on that light, and they just can't get it. Nothing worse than not being able to make that cup of coffee in mm. the morning. Um, and look at this. We're in those advisories and warnings through today. Not let alone New Hampshire coming in with wind chills around 18 to 20 degrees. Oh so you gosh. start to lose heat. And then we have a bit more of an issue on our hands and restoration efforts with the winds going to be a little more difficult as well. Mm -hmm. And this is a, just yet another scene out of New Hampshire. So we can go on any camera in northern New England. We're going to be back into that winter vibe. I'm not going to I'm kind of here for it. That was actually part of a golf course as well. Not quite golf weather. And we're looking at two different scenes coming one out of Philly with a time lapse in Providence, Rhode Island, my hometown. In fact, Narragansett Bay, at least trying to look over into Narragansett Bay. Visibility is low. That's the live view. This was yesterday over into the city of brotherly love and the rain. It doesn't want to end. Now there is dry air trying to skip its way from the Chesapeake Bay up areas of 95 DC going to be moving into Philly as well as the Big Apple. So we've sort of waned in the way of rain, but wind still whipping around and that I think is going to be a main component where we get some white knuckle driving in difficulty conditions for commuters. We are just probably on the cusp of rush hour at this point. Point. And in the past two days, you see that swath of yellow. It's not just going to be in pockets of the Northeast. It's all the way down through the Adirondacks. That's two to three inches. So we could be talking about flooding conditions with any additional rain really putting on top of what has already been seen, leading to some more puddling and ponding on the roads. Yeah, it was very soggy coming in today. Mm. And you, it was very um, hard to land on a spot even walking where you weren't stepping through a puddle. Um, and it's not just the sidewalks we're worried about, we're worried about your basements and some of the rivers and the creeks that are gonna be experiencing still the minor to maybe that moderate stage, especially for the Eastern seaboard there. Yeah, what's interesting about that is it takes about 48 hours to fully crest, even after the rain has fallen. So mm -hmm. you don't wanna completely disregard the basement and the sump pumps over the next few days, even though the rain is going to try and come to an end. And here is the future cast, where you're starting to see a little bit of a calmer scenario as we go into the afternoon hours, but there's almost a little pinwheel reload as we wake up on Friday morning and then we get that secondary northwesterly wind to drive down a little more moisture for tomorrow.